Welcome back to another devlog. Here's what I've been up to in the month of February. I started off the year attending a workshop put on by Sask Interactive. It was presented by this guy, Chris Zukowski. He's kind of an industry expert when it comes to marketing games. And my biggest takeaway was this. Biggest decision in your marketing before you even said anything. Like as soon as you said, we're gonna make a platformer, you've, you've like, locked off all these marketing decisions and you've made such a set such a course for yourself. In this graph, which he also features on his blog, howtomarketagame.com, strategy games are by far the most in demand by Steam users. And it's with good reason. They're highly replayable experiences and they're really, really hard to make. Very difficult for a solo developer like me who's making his first game. So I decided to make the next best thing a role-playing game. And this is what February was all about, prototyping a top-down RPG game. Prototyping is all about testing your riskiest assumptions. And for my RPG game, my riskiest assumption, or rather what I think will require the most effort and iterative tuning, are fluid movement controls and a responsive combat system. The first thing I set out to do was to create basic locomotion moving the character around in 3D space. When it came to player attacks, I wanted a dynamic hit detection system. I wanted hits on enemies to register exactly when the animation showed the hit would land. In the case of a swiping melee attack, damage should be applied not during the follow through, but when the weapon makes contact with the hitbox. In addition to melee attacks, a good RPG is going to need projectiles. How else are we going to cast lightning bolts? I also attended the Global Game Jam this year. The theme was hide and seek, and I couldn't get out of my head the scene in Peter Pan when Peter loses his shadow. That was the inspiration for my game, Annie in the Shadow Palace, where you play as Annie's shadow, solving puzzles to try and escape from the eerie Shadow Palace. If you want to check it out, the game is up on itch.io. See the link in the description. I didn't quite like the locomotion system I had implemented earlier, so I found a really solid samurai animation pack that had much smoother animations. I think it's a really big improvement. Combo attacks are in. Hitting the same attack button at the right moment will trigger a combo move. There are three parts in the combo for this weapon. Slash, backslash, and a thrust with, eventually, a knockback effect. The remainder of the month was setting up some basic artificial intelligence. I haven't done too much with Unreal Engine's behavior trees, so I'm still working on that. The animations are a bit wonky for now, but it'll do for the time being. The enemies in this game will all have unique abilities that the player will have to learn how to counter. The first I've made is his charge ability. These ground crawlers, if you will, will line up and attack and then charge at the player in a set direction. I took some inspiration from games like World of Warcraft, where the trash mobs prepare you for an eventual boss fight. During the boss fight, I think it would be cool if you had to make it run into one of these pillars, and doing so, that would stun the boss and then make you do significant more damage to it. And finally, probably the most important thing, the corporation was registered and the tax forms were filed. The I's have been dotted and the T's have been crossed. We are officially a Steamworks partner. Now, well, I guess I gotta finish this game.